Chris Sewell here, baseball card collector, investor, dealer in that order. Welcome everyone. My uh, last trip to the States was my best one yet by far. 23 of you sent me your collections through the mail and uh, 21 of you accepted my offer. So two, two, two decided to pass, which was no big deal. I just shipped the cards back. Uh, really, really no issues there. But yeah, 21 collections through the mail. It included all sorts of great stuff. There was an, a, an impressive George Brett collection. There was a couple really impressive Cal Ripken collections. There was a, a bunch of vintage, all, all sorts of great stuff. So thank you everyone for, uh, for, for putting your trust in me with, with that. I also made two in-person high roller purchases on this trip, which I will uh, highlight in some upcoming videos. Well, one of which I had to call on the big guns, the, uh, the Texas snowman himself, Jeremy Donson, to partner with on. And, and the other high roller purchase I made is you know, maybe my favorite collection that I've ever purchased, honestly, from you know, purely a, a collector's standpoint. But enough teasing upcoming videos. Today's video, I wanted to show you a purchase that I made through the mail. Uh, that was a very, very unique item, a fun one for sure, especially if you're a card nerd of the 1990s, such as myself. These cards were sent to be by Mike. Uh, thank you, of course, to Mike. And uh, I'll just run through the cards up front and then afterwards discuss you know, the deal and what I paid and sort of what my thinking was uh, from, a, from a dealer's perspective. So this is me uh, having just opened the package and looking at the cards for the, the first time. Sorry for the poor video quality. Uh, I got some sharper pictures, which I'll show in just a sec. But what this was was a near complete set of 1997 Skybox EX2000 football. Uh, and these are all the credential parallel, uh, the credentials parallel. So the EX2000 credentials. Now the credentials are serial numbered out of 100. And from 1997, that is tough. I, I mean, how many, you know, complete sets or near complete sets could even even exist at this point, a 25-year-old insert set, serial numbered out of 100. There's 60 cards in the complete set. He had 57 of the 60, so just missing three cards. Now, the three cards missing were all major stars. It was missing uh, Brett Favre, Jerry Rice, and Steve Young, but everyone else was included. It had all the other big stars, Barry Sanders, Emmett Smith, John Elway, Dan Marino, and, uh, and, and some other Hall of Famers as well. There was no key rookies this year. Uh, unfortunately, the biggest rookies were Jake Plummer and uh, Corey Dillon and a couple other guys on that level. But no no Hall of Fame rookies, for example, which was uh, unfortunate. But like I said, still a very uh, impressive set. There's the John Elway, as, as you can see. Now, sort of rare 90s inserts have gone way, way up in the last few years, mo mostly in basketball, you know, uh, headed by Michael Jordans and, and Kobe Bryant's. But uh, in baseball as well, you know, uh, Ken Griffey Jr. and Derek Jeter's and uh, in football, less so, but there's the Dan Marino that I just set aside. But yeah, in football as well, not not to the level as basketball or baseball, but you know, cards serial numbered out of 100 from the 1990s. That's that's tough. And these are really really nice looking cards to begin with. It's a really attractive set, and then a really nice sort of uh, credentials parallel, which which are really nice looking cards. There's uh, Troy Aikman and Dion Sanders, a couple of cowboy greats. Mike said he put this back together, uh, put this set back together all the way back in 1997 or maybe 1998, shortly af after it had come out and, uh, you know, got really close, 57 of the 60, but just had sort of stopped back then and never, never picked it back up. There was the Barry Sanders uh, and sort of had no interest with, you know, n no interest in the cards anymore. They're just sitting around, but they had been in, in sleeves and top loaders uh, since, since all the way back in 1997. And he had one, one card was graded. There's the Barry Sanders, uh, the Marino, and the Elway. He had the Emmett Smith was graded. It was graded a PSA 6. I'll talk about that a little more in just a sec. But um, as you can see, all the cards are serial numbered out of 100. But very cool that uh, he put this collection together, you know, himself 25, 25 years ago, one by one. And in addition to the, the Emmett Smith, the Sanders, the Marino, and the Elway, which again are the four biggest cards, there's plenty of other... Hall of Famers included Troy Aikman and Deion Sanders, who I already mentioned, but also Terrell Davis and Thurman Thomas and Curtis Martin, Tim Brown, uh, Marvin Harrison, other you know notable stars like Drew Bledsoe and, as I mentioned, Jake Plummer, rookie. Actually, I think I said Corey Dillon. I don't think he was actually in this set. Uh, Warwick Dunn, rookie, was, uh, was in this set. So uh, Jake Plummer and Warwick Dunn were the two biggest rookies. But other Hall of Famers, Reggie White, Chris Carter, Marshall Falk, Junior Seau, Jerome Bettis. You know, these aren't like super, super star power names, but they are Hall of Famers and rare inserts uh, of the 90s of Hall of Famers. That's, you know, still still plenty good. Now, this was a very difficult collection to assess in terms of, you know, fair market value just because many of the cards, if not most of the cards, had no recent sales to go off of uh, just because they're, they're so rare. In terms of like the big four cards, uh, there was a John Elway sale recently, a raw copy that sold for 700 
And there was a Brett Favre uh, PSA 9 that had sold recently for 800 Again, he didn't have the Favre in, in his collection. It was one of the three he was missing. But in terms of comps, those were the only two uh, sales of any of the major stars I could find. So given that, I sort of valued these four cards uh, at about $700 a piece in terms of what they would go for in an open auction on eBay. In terms of the next level of uh, sort of star Hall of Famers, but one notch down, uh, looking at comps on eBay, I estimated that these would sell for around $150 to $200 a piece on average. Some would definitely sell higher, like the Deion Sanders and uh, the Reggie White, I know off the top of my head, would, would definitely sell higher. But on average, about $150 to $200 or so. And uh, like I said, there were 15 players in sort of this category of, of, of card. And the commons I estimated would sell for about $50 a piece on average. So if you add all of that up, I, I estimated the, the breakup value to be between seven and $8,000. Um, it could end up being a little bit more than that uh, for a couple reasons, which I'll mention, but that was my best guess, seven to $8,000. And Mike and I agreed on a price up front, which is not something I usually do, but in this case, it was such a unique item that was you know easy to research up front. So we agreed at, to, that I would pay him $5,000. Actually, that was my, my opening offer. Mike was very happy with that. Uh, you know, it's 65 to 70 percent of market value. That's uh, that's a pretty strong offer. I usually would not pay that for raw modern cards, but uh, in this case, these are such unique items that I, I was okay paying that. Uh, Mike, you know, sent me the cards up front. I took a look; they were they were in great condition. So uh, I PayPal them the five thousand dollars, and and all of that went went very very smooth. So on a standard collection with these numbers, you know, this is what it would look like: seventy five hundred dollars in sales. Uh, seller fees are going to be a little over $1,000. You know, total money in is going to be $6,300 uh, plus. Uh, the, the deal costs five grand, so they're looking at a profit of $1,300 plus, and that's about 27% or so. Now, 27% is is not good enough margins to be working on if you're trying to make a living doing this. But in this case, as I mentioned, there is some hidden upside. And by hidden upside, I just mean... Uh, potential, you know, upside on top of this that really is not predictable but is possible. There may be a lot of additional value on top of this or there may just be a little bit additional value or, or there may be none at all. It's, again, not something I can sort of uh, predict ahead of time. So it's not something you want to sort of factor into the the overall market value, but I am willing to pay a little bit more because that, that possibility is there. So I, I guess in that sense I am uh, factoring it in but the first category of hidden potential hidden value is in some of the commons now, there may just be you know two jamal anderson collectors who desperately want this card it hasn't hasn't you know there hasn't been one on ebay in years and they're willing to way over pay for it uh just just in order to to get it because maybe it's their their one chance to to get the Jamal Anderson card or, or any of the guys. I, I'm just picking Jamal Anderson at random. And, I, you know, I don't know that that'll be the case, but it's definitely possible. And I've, I've seen that in the past, and it's it's often random and, and very, very hard to predict. You know, who knows which who it'll be. Maybe it's Kerry Collins or Eddie Kennison or, you know, who, who knows. So that that's a possibility. And the second category of potential hidden value is in the grading. Now, this uh, Emmett Smith, the one graded card in the collection, got a six. It is, I thought that was a pretty harsh grade. The card's really, really sharp, but it does have a print line down the right border, which is uh, de definitely why it got the six. But I'm going to send a bunch of these into PSA, um, certainly all the major stars, and they're sharp. Like here's, you know, the Barry Sanders. It's it's very sharp, you know, centered. The back looks sharp, but if you look on the back, like the upper right corner is a little ding. So the cards really aren't going to have much chance at a, at a 10, at 10s. If the cards come back sixes, sevens, eights, that sort of thing, you're probably going to probably be basically breaking even on the grading fees. If they come back nines, uh, it'll probably add a little bit of value, although no, not not a whole lot. And if it comes back a ten, if it pull up, hit any tens, that'll definitely add a lot of value. But PSA is really not giving out tens these days, so not expecting um, a lot of tens. And remember, grading fees are a hundred dollars a card at the moment with uh, with PSA. Now I sent uh, I sent in a recent order and I included ten of these cards in that order. You can see him here, uh, Plummer, Reggie White, Deion Sanders, Barry Sanders, John Elway, Dan Marino, Marshall Falk, Brad Johnson, Ricky Waters, and Trent Dilfer. Uh, those 10 have been sent into PSA. I'll kind of see how, how how we do. You know, if I get a bunch of 8s and, you know, a couple 9s, I will probably won't send any more in. But if I get, you know, a bunch of 9s and a few 10s, you know, then I'll then I'll definitely send some more uh, some more in. So kind of going to sort of wait and see on that. And remember, I've sent in 10 cards here, so that's an additional thousand dollars in uh in cost towards towards this deal but that's it thank you everyone for watching and thank you again uh, to mike for selling me your, your really cool collection here uh, let me know if anyone has any questions about any of this uh you know feel free to leave them in the comments below and i'll do my best to answer them as always hope you enjoyed and see you all again real soon thanks everyone